Hello and welcome back to the Shiki Science Show. In this video, we'll ask the question, superheroes may be fiction, but is there a future for superfoods? So this video is actually a video representation of an essay I wrote for the Young Writer Nature essay competition. My essay didn't win or anything like that, but it was kind of referenced in one of their summaries, so I thought that it would make a good video nonetheless. So you can actually read my entry here, but in this video I'll pretty much just speak through it and also go into a bit more detail about synthetic biology. Alright, so here it goes. Now, those of you familiar with one of my favourite scenes from the 2000 film Miss Congeniality will surely remember how Cheryl misinterprets this question, what is your perfect date? The thing is, I would too. Well, I probably wouldn't, but for the purpose of this, I, I would. But anyway, my perfect date would be fresh with a soft and chewy texture. Yes, in my case, I refer to the fruit. And apologies, uh, dates are actually quite hard to draw with limited colours. But not only do dates taste good, they also have a great biochemical composition of essential vitamins, minerals, dietary fibre, carbohydrates, phenolic acids, and carotenoids. With the antioxidant, anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer properties this composition is thought to provide, dates are often considered a superfood, a marketing term for foods that provide health benefits due to their high nutrient densities. And so eating so-called superfoods has become desirable for extending one's health span, disease-free lifespan, especially since ageing is a major risk factor for cancer, cardiovascular and neurodegenerative diseases. Targeting ageing through diet would therefore be an effective strategy to minimise the incidence of multi-morbidities and likely be a cheaper alternative than treating the diseases individually, helping to reduce healthcare costs. As the global increases in health span continue to lag lifespan, are superfoods the solution to prevent this additional lifetime spent on morbidity? Well, the problem is there is no scientifically agreed definition for a superfood, neither is the term commonly used by scientists and dietitians. This is partly due to a lack of scientific evidence supporting their health claims, but also because superfoods individually cannot substitute a healthy lifestyle and balanced diet. But what if effective superfoods could be created that not only provide nutritional value but are accessible to everyone ensuring food security in an environmentally friendly manner? With the global population predicted to exceed 9.6 billion by 2050, doubling crop demand, and estimates of up to 20% of late life spent on morbidity, developing a superfood would be a desirable goal. But is it attainable within my lifetime? Uh, just to add, the idea of it being within my lifetime was one of the requirements of the essay competition. Redefining the superfoods. The current so-called superfoods gain their title from the wealth of vitamins, minerals and chemicals they possess, which claim to reduce blood pressure and cancer risk. Redefining superfoods as health span enhancers would require the addition and tinkering of crop components to achieve this, followed by substantial testing of their efficacy to gain scientific approval. Much hype is currently surrounding a variety of drugs that are beneficial to extending lifespan and or health span in various species. These include drugs like metformin, which is currently registered for clinical trials against ageing itself, resveratrol, spermidine and rapamycin. The latter three are produced naturally from different biological sources, but incorporating them into the synthesis of edible crops simultaneously at various concentrations or using chemical derivatives of the drugs, or novel drugs yet to be discovered, would enable the crops to be distinguished from currently available superfoods. Regardless of the contents though, these crops would have to grow fast, even in limiting conditions, to meet the demands of the global population estimates, and thus show abiotic and biotic stress resistance. This is all to avoid the food system placing a major toll on land use, biodiversity reduction, fresh water usage and pollution from fertilisers, which are major contributors to climate change. How could this idea then be turned into a reality? Improvements in yield quality and stress resistance have already been achieved in crops using genome editing. This involves identifying genes contributing to these traits and mutating them accordingly. CRISPR-Cas gene editing systems have the potential to advance the pace of targeted modifications and incorporate foreign gene clusters for the synthesis of desired drugs. 
Gene clusters for the synthesis of natural drugs like resveratrol can be sought from the original species from which they were discovered, whilst metformin would require ingenuity to modify the synthesis pathways of related natural chemicals. Modifications of this sort would bring superfoods into the realms of synthetic biology. And yes, I, I do know how to spell synthetic. <laughs> Um, so, synthetic biology is the application of biology and engineering to design and produce novel biological components. In this case, novel regulatory gene circuits for the biosynthesis of the selected drugs into crops. More gene clusters are likely to be discovered through genome mining ventures and high throughput sequencing to explore the vast amount of biochemistry out there. But regardless of the method, international cooperation for superfood production would take time. The European Union currently treats genetically modified crops with the same stringent regulations as genetically modified organisms. This would limit the planting and selling of the crops and investment opportunities for research and development. So why should we care? Aging and sustaining the planet that we live on affects all of us. This includes the future generations to come. If aging can be targeted in a way that also deals with the competing battle between crop production and climate change, it should be a high priority goal to strive towards. Sure, there are many logistics to tackle, how to gain research funds for developing crops, identifying drugs to enhance health span and their effective and safe doses through clinical trials, how to incorporate the drugs into edible crops, organising international discussions on the ethics of using CRISPR, and how to regulate accessibility of the superfoods to everyone. But we have the tools to get started. Whether the breakthrough comes on the 25th of April <laughs> or another future date within my lifetime, superfoods congenial for health and the planet would benefit all of us. So that is the end of my essay, but just because it's pretty interesting and part of my title, I just go into a slight bit more detail into synthetic biology. And so obviously my essay was a bit hypothetical, but this recent Nature Review article actually goes into some examples where we have seen improvements and achievements being made with the use of synth synthetic biology already. And they really emphasise the point that with synthetic biology, we can try and achieve the biology of what is not there. So, you know, evolution is only selected for so many genes and proteins. We can, you know, take that knowledge and then transform it, improve upon it, modify it. And this idea about sustainability by design is pretty cool. And so, yeah, definitely go read that. I also like the way that they flipped Richard Feynman's quotes, what I do not understand, I cannot use to create. Very true in the case of synthetic biology. So yeah, thanks for listening to my essay and so have a good day.